I can see we have uh, Dan with us. How are you doing? Fine. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Excellent. It's a great conference. Really enjoying it. Fantastic. Thank you for the kind words. I really appreciate that. So um, first and foremost, founder and CEO, Beluga Ling Linguistics. Um, why don't you tell us where you're based? We're, we're based in Madrid. And uh, this is uh, basically because it's a great city. And my wife is uh, from here. So that was the reason why German moved to Spain. Uh, strange reason, but yes. Uh, so that's, that's why we have put it here in Madrid. Fantastic. So there, there is basically an invested interest in being in Spain. So, or did you not have a choice? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So from what I understand, I mean, you, you have, your company has been around for quite some time, uh, has a wide range of, um, of different types of customers in, for example, security and digital uh, for e-learning, things like that. So what, uh, I mean, how are things going during, during the pandemic? What, I mean, how are things going for you? <laughs> Basically, let's bring it down to that. Exactly. So, yeah, we, I, I think right now we, we have been hearing that all day long. So it mm -hmm. really depends where okay. you, you work in, in which area you work in. We have been in digital since 2006. Actually, right. two, 2004, I started in the industry. Um, but with Beluga, we started in 2006 and have never done other things than working um, on continuous translation since 2006. Oh, wow. okay. So um, in this sense, our clients are digital companies. They are marketing. They are, as you say, the advertising platforms. Mm -hmm. have been in, in, in user interface localization since then, since the very beginning, and have seen also like the up and downs of the internet. But uh, right now, I would say it was a great bet uh, okay. on digital um, because in general the digital client have have less uh, infrastructure they have they are completely digital so they can move pretty fast and can right. adapt to the situation and I think uh, in general digital is right now a very a go-to option for many people Okay, so are you saying that, for example, within the demand of the digital clients that you, you have, you, you haven't necessarily seen a decrease in business? No. We have seen two, two states, which is flat or increased. Okay. That, that's, that's fantastic for you. I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. At least the, the digital side of things is going very well. Exactly. So, I mean, with respect to um, with staff, I mean, how, how many staff do you have in your company? We have uh, a small in-house team. And okay. then in total, our operations is about 80 people. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so quite, because, quite widespread. Yeah. So, so the, the reason why I say a small in-house team, it's like a lean organization. So we right. have tried to, to get rid of as much baggage, which is not key to our, our operations, okay. as possible. Mm -hmm. So that means tech stuff, um, accounting stuff, um, everything... You know, everything which what is not core to our business, which is right. project management, client, uh, customer management, mm -hmm. and, um, and vendor relationships, all the rest is sort of, you know, not core and can be picked in a very, yeah. like, spot on situations, or you build up a network of collaborators, like we have done, who are working with us continuously, but on a on a collaboration basis and that's great right okay so in terms of your infrastructure then if you only had a core a smaller core team i mean did you for example send them home do you have office space that you had to uh to negotiate with like how, how did you actually handle the whole social distancing thing uh i mean and by the way i've seen videos online of of madrid and people dancing on their balconies which i find <laughs> awesome so hopefully you're part of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, what's, what's been the, the, I guess, tone and the impact of, of having to do that? And how did you navigate that? Yeah, so, so we have been having all the situations you can imagine. So we worked, we had an office, we worked from home, we had offices. Right. Uh, we scaled back to work at home. Um, but then I think, and this is, this is a little bit what, um, um, 
what the previous um, uh, Don Palmer uh, talked about. Right. Is, you know, the preparation right now. So how, how are you affected? We actually started in 2015 with relaunching our company, with relaunching and focusing really on, on building up processes, um, image, like the marketing part, the, right. the sales infrastructure, so how can you scale? How can, um, uh, let's say, half a million business grow to a five million business? So all this okay. needs a, tons of, of preparation. And um, that's what we, we started in 2015. Mm -hmm. And since then, we haven't stopped. So one of the things is office space. You said, you, said, right. uh, you talked about that. Um, we decided to go to, we, uh, to WeWork competitor spaces, actually, okay. co-working space. Right. And it is, uh, I think, still a fantastic opportunity. So we have heard, like, uh, this morning, Julio Leal mm -hmm. talked about that WeWork is a loser of this situation. Yeah. I, don't, I don't agree with him. I okay. think WeWork will be a very strong model itself because people will partly work from home will be more used to work for, on digital and and on distance mm -hmm. but on the other hand and that's what we have learned from our last uh like working from home uh period is isolation is a big big topic for Absolutely. freelancers every yeah. like freelancers know that mm -hmm. and getting in touch with people outside of your business, outside of your work in a workspace, like a, a co-working space is just brutal. It's, it's, it, it um, helps you to think outside of the box. It brings new influence yeah. to you, to your employees. And overall it's very flexible. So I can work, our office can be in all spaces around the world. So I worked in New York, for some time, mm -hmm. you know, so all this is possible. Okay, so and, and I mean, the perspective of the co-working, because I mean, obviously co-workings are picking up in popularity, um, but a lot of people have that, uh, I guess that notion or that concern that their clients won't perceive them as a real business if they're, if they're you know, uh, based in a co-working environment. Uh, what's your opinion on that? I mean, yes, yeah, so, you know, <laughs> we are a goal-driven driven company. Okay. So we measure success by, by the goals we achieve or not. And right. it is not important if you're in a t-shirt at home or in a suit <laughs> in an office. You know, if this is your benchmark, then I think yep. you, you're not competitive today because today's world is really about competitive and achievement. So you need this. Uh, it's, it doesn't matter. And it has a great infrastructure, co-working. You have yeah, all these not essential stuff externalized. One bill at the end of the month. Great opportunity. I, I would agree. And I often, I, I always say that, for example, I want to pay people for their, for their intellectual capacities, not necessarily how they look or how they dress or, you know, where they're working. So I, I, I would agree with your statement that, you know, if you're goal-based and you're meeting those goals with, you know, your intellectual capital, that that's fantastic. So that, that's good to hear. Um, so you obviously haven't had any negative impacts from co-working experiences and things like that, which is good. No. So, I mean, in terms it's, it's of- It's a plus, it's, it's, it's different. It's even a plus because, you know, um, new, if you want to attract human resource to your company and especially Gen Z or, you know, or, you know, the new, new generations of, of workers coming in, they don't want to, to stamp nobody wants that you know nope. so I, and I, agree. Um, I think for us it is the co-working space is a place of meeting it's a meeting place for mm -hmm. us so it's okay and, yeah. and i mean I, I think that with that uh, and i know we're actually running a bit uh, short on time so i, I just want to make sure that i ask you some very key key important questions in terms of your technological infrastructure um and, and the decisions you made back when you started you know restructuring your company what, what was your main focus? What was your main uh, objective in terms on the technology side? On the technology side, of course, scalability. Okay. For all our opportunities, um, it's, it's scale. So operation on the back end, project management, everything mm -hmm. is cloud-based. 
in our case. Excellent. So, so, and the, the translation tools we are using are also cloud-based and that gives all these opportunities of free movement. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I, I would also agree with that. I mean, it's, I, I think more and more, obviously people are moving to the cloud and people are creating um, environments or structures, infrastructures that are mobile. So you can actually, you know, be anywhere in the world you can still continue doing your day and, and you're less impacted by uh by the, the i guess the place where you're actually conducting the work so I, i'm super happy to hear that you know um things haven't um <laughs> gone badly for you during the pandemic uh, i'm really happy sincerely happy to hear that um obviously the core team you know if uh, you're doing well they're still around you're keeping everybody everything in place you're able to serve your customers i think that's super positive uh and i think for everyone um you know, and again, we're just shy of about 500 attendees. I think it's a positive message to say that obviously there's an opportunity um, by creating an infrastructure that allows you to be mobile. Um, I think that you had so, some words of wisdom within your answers whereby, you know, focusing on the business structure, becoming lean um, and, and growing uh, in that capacity is just a good positive message for everybody that's been listening. Um, let me, do you ever let me, one, one last comment to this is... Yeah right now and so there was a lot of, of uns there is a lot of uncertainty but it, it is a moment of opportunity and and this opportunity right now i mean it is hard and not everybody has the same reality but now it's a black swan moment like we have heard before right. so there are people in the market that can collaborate with you who wouldn't have been available a year ago and that, so opportunities are there. Plan ahead, go where you want to go. And you know, now you have more access than ever to invest. Invest in yourself or invest in your company, in your infrastructure, but invest. I think that's an important message. But words of wisdom. I think that's perfect. I think it was a great note to end our, our discussion on. Um, I, I would encourage everybody, for example, to, to reach out uh, to you. Uh, should they have questions? Should they need uh, words of, of wisdom, inspiration? <laughs> Ask how Lord you lunch. did it. Lord uh, or, I hope or we can connect the Lunch with I, each other. I forgot to mention the founder of uh, Lock Lunch. That's right. I apologize for not mentioning that. <laughs> no, no problem. No, it's about the network. So, so that's great. But also there, we will see a lot of innovation coming through. Absolutely. And hopefully the new platform for Lock Lunch will be soon out there. We are working on it. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate the chat and hopefully we'll get to do it again soon. Brian, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.